Good evening and thanks for joining us for another episode of Sagas. I'm Sophie Sparks. The theme for the last episode was dark, so this episode we are looking on the brighter side of things. Today we'll shed some light on a new class, experience the use of light to showcase the artists in our school, learn about the new lights in the theater department, and meet a man who lights up our holiday season. Some of the students at Seaman High School are bringing the history of the district to light through a new experimental class. One of the classes just obtained a grant to help them accomplish their goals. This year, a new class was created at Seaman High School. The main task of the Museum Studies class is to catalog the history of the district. Um, so Museum Studies is, is pretty much a class to kind of learn a bit about the history of Seaman. Um, and then create exhibits based on the artifacts and uh, all of the documents from the history that we have. Uh, really all we're doing in there is learning like how you maintain artifacts like that, like all the old yearbooks, how you properly maintain those, um, how to create exhibits that people enjoy and how to like also set up those exhibits so you can create something that not only protects the artifacts but also like displays them well. One of the first things we did, like first activities we did, was go to the museum and like look through the history and then create the exhibit that's out in right next to the art room. And what we have there is like through the hundred years and then also we have the homecoming kings and queens like throughout the years. The museum studies class recently received a grant to purchase materials needed to accomplish their goal? Well, preparation for the grant was more or less uh, writing out um, and justifying why we needed what we needed and what we were going to do with the money. So it was a process of going back and forth with the grant administration as to what we could buy, what we could not buy. So for instance, physical materials were out. Um, so the original grant we had, we proposed, was close to $50,000 which included uh, essentially physical items for the museum to uh, revamp the museum. So display cases, those sorts of things, uh, boxes for storage, acid-free boxes, acid-free tubes, those things, all those museum quality uh, materials, including acid-free hangers. So the Information Network of Kansas grant or Inc. grant um, from like what I took from it, it's a grant that the like ink department gives out every I believe year or like so often, and it allows like organizations that are nonprofit to get a grant. That way, they can do projects that'll help the community. So for like ours, since it's a museum, uh, we get to share information to the rest of Kansas. And so part of the big thing that we had to do was emphasize how we have like a web portal we're going to create based on Kansas, Kansas History Museum's web portal. And that's where all of our information will go. So not only like Seaman High students or like people in Topeka can access like our museum materials, you'll also have people like all across Kansas being able to access this plus people outside of Kansas. We stripped it all down and essentially what we came up with was a digital project uh, built around a massive computer, hard drive, and camera equipment, lighting, those sorts of things, OCR software, and that was the grant in the end. After the final revision of the grant, which we went through about 15 revisions, I would say over the three months that we wrote the grant, and expanded it from a mere five-page grant to a 21-page grant. They want to know in the my, most minute detail how we want to use their money. And so that justification took a long time to flesh out and, and justify and say, this is what we want to use this money for and this is how we're going to use it. And this is why it's going to be a benefit for not only this district, but this community and the state of Kansas. Next semester, the class plans to expand the district museum and possibly have a mobile museum. The Museum Studies class is going to continue to renovate the District Museum throughout the coming years. They are always looking for a new student to work on the project. 
Students involved in another subject at our school are using light to showcase some projects of their own. Light is an important characteristic of artwork. Stephen has several good artists that use the light to showcase their talents. So this is an art project that our advanced studio class does each year and their assignment is basically they can either choose an adjective or they can choose an object and that is used to guide their art making so that the five pieces are somewhat thematic. Um, contrast is really important when creating art. Um, it helps create depth within it and add some character to it. There's nothing, there's no better feeling than making a sharp art piece and whatnot that stands out strong. I really like drawing weird things that like make you look at it more and kind of make you think about the meaning of it. So I did my theme kind of spooky because it was around Halloween time. So I feel like the project itself is, you know, hopefully influential in the sense that they have the freedom to select their own prompts as far as what's guiding their art making, but also influential in helping them be intentional, again, about how they use principles of design. Uh, I would describe it as personal. Uh, a lot of my artwork comes from things I've previously done, things I've experienced, and people I've met and whatnot in places I've been. Uh, almost all of my artworks have that sort of element to them of personality and, you know, uh, individuality to them. Uh, for me, art is about telling a story, and the only story I know is my own, really. As, as art educators here in the building, I know, you know, Mrs. Ramberg and Mrs. Rudy and I, we just feel real blessed that we have uh, such talented kids and talented kids that invest so much time and effort in their projects. You can see these art pieces on display outside of Mr. LaDuke's room and around the halls. Light is essential to create a wonderful theater production. Without lights, performers would not be able to show their great abilities. When light became a problem in our auditorium, a change needed to happen. And then these ones are the new ones and you can combine the colors, like if you do red and blue, purple, you can make pink, which would have been a big help for Legally Blonde last year. As school ends for the 2018-19 school year, Seaman High School's auditorium lays in darkness. Three months later, as school starts back up again, the auditorium is full of light. These, uh, the newer ones, are LED lights, and before we had halogen lights, and so, and a lot outdated, obviously. Then our old halogen lights were huge scoop lights, and just basically a giant box and we had about eight of them. Over the summer, new LED lights were added to Seaman High School's auditorium. Our new LED lights are bars and they're pretty slim, easy adjusted, and pretty good. Well, we really wanted to upgrade our theater program and we have a lot of events that are taking place there and we, know we, we knew we needed new lighting and new sound. But we began with the lighting because there were two events that occurred. One was the psych had a burn mark on it, and secondly, while setting up for a band performance, one of the lights burst and came down um, onto the uh, stage and it was on fire. So with that in mind, we thought we need to replace those halogen lights, which burned very hot. I had no role in anything. This all happened before I was hired. So I think Mr. Monahan. Mr. Bond and Mr. Staley, they all got together and decided to need lights. Mr. Bond decided we uh, can get more microphones. So uh, this is kind of all before I've been hired, but I've been looking and working with some of this stuff, and so it's pretty exciting. These new lights will provide new opportunities for future theater production. They um, give uh, better light, more clear light, and also different colors of lights. So we can have white light, we can have red light, blue lights, and the color lights um, cover more space. With the new lights, new buttons were added to control these lights. We have to have different buttons for the different colors, so uh, they added a little, they added some buttons on our light board. Well, we have like the basic colors, but like we can combine them and make new colors. So, like these ones, I think that they would have had, no, these ones are just the whole thing. We would have to put something over it to make the light. We'd have to put the gel stuff. But with these, they already have it in it, and their LED and everything, so they should just work. And that's what allows it to have so many different functions and features to really put in any combination of lighting colors with LED packages that you could imagine. 
And we saw some of that with our very first production, the Beverly Hillbillies, that worked out really well. And I know that they'll come up with new advanced ways to light for different productions as soon as we become more familiar with the equipment. The SHS Theater Department has already used this new equipment for multiple performances. In our fall play, we used blue and red. Red for uh, a firefighter scene and blue for just uh, shifting of the mood. And we're planning on using it a lot during our musical because we have night scenes and we need some greens for more forest scenes. And uh, so it helps out with our musical. We're excited for using that. Seaman High School strives to give their students the best opportunities. Just that, you know, we want to support our theater and music programs, and we're lucky to have such an amazing auditorium. We want to make sure that we have proper lighting and sound for the various productions and performances. If you would like to see these new lights in action, be sure to attend any of the great theater productions this coming year. Every year, TARC uses lights to raise over $200,000 for their organization. We talked to the man behind the magic that is Winter Wonderland. Winter Wonderland is a fundraiser that was started 22 years ago. Um, TARC um, helps uh, disability or people with developmental disabilities and things like that. And so any kind of an agency like that is always trying to get enough money to do the programs mm -hmm. um, and so one of their board of director type people I think were at it was at a different display different town and thought maybe that's what we ought to do here in Topeka. So. Every year around Christmas thousands of people come to Lake Shawnee to see Tark light up the night at Winter Wonderland. What those people don't know is that one man volunteers around 200 hours every year to make sure those lights keep on shining. I started um, helping with Winter Wonderland about 20 years ago. I was bringing my kids through, just driving through, and I'm an electrical engineer, and I thought they might be able to use an electrical engineer to help make things happen out here. So I've been helping for about 20 years, set up the displays and animate them and program them and try to keep them going over the years. I'm just one of probably five or six hundred volunteers that helped make this thing happen and so just I guess because of my technical background I'm able to do things that most people don't mm -hmm. but uh, for instance a lot of the uh, displays are animated they have timers and programmable controllers on them and things like that and so um, over the years, we've tried to keep things interesting and new and add stuff to existing displays or um, buy new displays and build them. So um, probably the biggest thing that I do is try to come up with different animations to make it more interesting from year to year. The two that, that I, my favorite ones are the, uh, the oars on the uh, Viking ship by the dragon. The dragon's everybody's favorite, and so that's um, that. That's probably you know we we animated and put made the oars move back and forth, and people like that. And then probably the other one is the um, uh, old man winter, which uh, uh, the guys at Topeka Foundry drew this thing up, and so you've got a 12 foot tall guy blowing snowflakes and we've got color changing LEDs that are you know doing the animation so yeah. that one was fun and people like it so. With work to be done for Winter Wonderland during the day and night on top of a full-time job Ron keeps himself very busy during the holiday season. I'm an electrical engineer um, I work at Evergy West West you know West Star but uh, Evergy uh, and I design substations so if you go down the road and you see the big poles and the lines running or the substations inside the fenced areas that's what I design so anyway it's just this is my hobby during the course of the year I'm out here every other night or something and I'll just walk through when they're just getting ready to open up just to make sure things are behaving and something didn't trip off or somebody didn't unplug something and you know whatever. Without Ron, Tark, and the rest of the volunteers for Winter Wonderland, we would not be able to enjoy those amazing lights during the most wonderful time of the year. If you haven't gotten a chance to visit Winter Wonderland, make sure to head out to Lake Shawnee before December 31st. 
That's all we have for this episode. From all of us here at Sagas, we wish you a merry and bright holiday season. Now, we are going to leave you with a few shots of holiday decorations around our school.